Okay, so when this bowstring is released, the tension is going to cause it to accelerate in this direction. So it helps for us to resolve the tension into components like this and this. In other words, vertical and horizontal. It's useful in this case. However, when you have a mass on a slope like this, most likely the mass will accelerate in this direction. So it's no longer useful to use a vertical and horizontal axis. Instead, we should use axes that are perpendicular to slope and more importantly, parallel to slope. The normal reaction force is already perpendicular to slope, so we don't need to do anything to that. It's the weight that we need to resolve. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to resolve the weight perpendicular and parallel to the slope. Firstly, this is 30 degrees, yeah? So it's going to, you're going to find that this component here is also going to be 30 degrees, okay, the angle there. I'm going to carry on drawing this force, which is perpendicular to the slope, and I'm going to start then, I'm going to start drawing the component that's parallel to the slope as well. What I'm looking for is a perfect rectangle. Okay, I need to get a perfect rectangle. Because we're resolving the weight, the weight should be the hypotenuse. Uh, the, the diagonal of this rectangle. So there you go. This is the component of the weight that's a perpendicular to slope and this is the component of the weight that's parallel to slope. I need to make sure it makes a tilted rectangle like uh, this. And here's some incorrect answers. So in this one you've got parallelogram which is completely wrong. It should be a perfect rectangle with parallel sides of, of equal length. And here you've got the component uh, the weight that's being one of the is not the diagonal it should be the weight that you're uh, resolving so here's a correct example and of course using shock trigonometry you can see this is going to be mg cosine theta because it's uh, in this case cosine 30 because it's touch an angle so it's adjacent so it's going to be cosine and this is going to be sine here because that's the opposite it's the same as here isn't it mg sine 30. Okay, describe and explain the motion of the skateboarder from A to uh, B. So in, uh, in both cases, to figure out what's going to happen, you need to resolve the weight of the skateboarder parallel and perpendicular to the slope. Okay, so if we resolve it parallel and perpendicular like this, so you should ensure, see that I'm trying to get a 90 degree angle here. And I'm looking for a rectangle like so. Okay, so this is the component that's perpendicular slope. I'm not too interested in this one. That's going to be balanced by the normal reaction force. But this is the component that I'm interested in. This is mg sine theta. Okay, so let's look what happens when he's further down the slope. So again, I'm going to try to go for this is 90 degrees there. So here you go, that's the component's perpendicular slope. As you can see, that's, that component has increased, the mg cosine theta has increased, and the mg sine theta has decreased. So his acceleration along parallel to slope has decreased. So at the beginning at A, there's going to be a large acceleration uh, causing him to go down the slope, speed up down the slope. But as he goes towards B, that component is decreasing, the parallel component to sl um, slope decreases and eventually he won't be accelerating at all.